welcome to Pathognomia. This is Jay. Today we're going to talk about papillary breast neoplasms. I find these entities confusing because of the different myoepithelial patterns they have and how sometimes they can look similar to each other. We're going to talk about papillary DCIS, atypical papilloma, encapsulated papillary carcinoma, and solid papillary carcinoma. So let's begin. Papillary DCIS is the most common type of DCIS in men. It's a morphologic subtype of DCIS where others include, depending on who you ask, comedal necrosis, then curbiform, flat, micropapillary, and solid. Histologically, it's a neoplastic proliferation of epithelial cells without myoepithelial cells covering the fibrovascular cores. That's in an arborizing pattern, but all contained within a duct that has surrounding myoepithelium. So your myoepithelial pattern will be, if you get a myoep stain, myoepithelial cells within the papillae will be absent, and the myoepithelial cells around the periphery of lesion will be retained. Real life tip, myoepithelial markers like calponin can stain capillaries inside the papillary DCIS. So don't let that fool you because there won't be any myoepithelial cells staining. Staged as PTIS, DCIS, and treatment is at least excision with greater than or equal to two millimeter margins if a lumpectomy is done. So here we have DCIS with papillary architecture as well as some micropapillary architecture. And a myoepithelial stain is done. And as you can see, the myoepithelial cells are retained in the periphery and are absent within the lesion. And here is just staining of the capillaries. Atypical papilloma. This is an intraductal papilloma involved by ADH and or DCIS. It's ADH when the focus of atypia is less than three millimeters and low nuclear break. It's DCIS when the atypia is greater than or equal to three millimeters, or if nuclear atypia is at least intermediate or high grade, regardless of the size. The myoepithelial pattern will be the myoepithelial cells within the papillae. It will be present in the intraductal papilloma, but absent in the foci of ADH DCIS. And the myoepithelial cells around the periphery of the lesion will be retained. Your differential diagnosis is papillary DCIS, encapsulated papillary carcinoma. And the treatment is excision as there is a 5 to 7.5 fold risk of invasive carcinoma. So here we have a region of introductal papilloma with this hyalinized stroma. You can imagine there will be myoepithelial cells if you look closely here. And then this region is more monotonous. It has this cookie cutter shape. It has some nuclear atypia. And as you can see here with the myoepithelial stains, you can see the myoepithelial cells staining within the intraductal papilloma. And in the foci of DCIS, it is absent. Encapsulated papillary carcinoma generally occurs in postmenopausal women, especially the seventh decade. Histologically, you'll see fine fibrovascular stalks comprised of neoplastic epithelial cells of low to intermediate grade, usually in a cystic space with a fibrous capsule. The myoep pattern will be the myoepithelial cells within the papillae will be absent, and the myoepithelial cells around the periphery of lesion is absent. It's staged as PTIS, like DCIS, in the absence of frank invasion. And this is even so with a lack of myoepithelial cells around the periphery of lesion. It's still considered PTIS. What is considered frank invasion is when you have the neoplastic cells invade past the fibrous capsule. Treatment is excision. Here you can see the fibrous capsule and you can see the delicate fibrovascular stalks lined by the neoplastic epithelium. And the myoepithelial marker, it's absent within the papillae and absent around the periphery of the lesion. Solid papillary carcinoma generally occurs in postmenopausal women, particularly the seventh decade or later. Histologically, you'll see expansile nodules with solid growth and delicate fibrovascular cores. Cytologically, it can show a salt and pepper chromatin or neuroendocrine differentiation. Your myoepithelial cells within the papillae will be absent, and the myoepithelial cells around the periphery of the lesion can be absent or it can be present. And it's staged as PTIS, DCIS, in the absence of frank invasion, even with lack of myoepithelial cells around the periphery of lesion. Frank invasion, look, it's more architecture based, and you want to look for jigsaw racket architecture with a desmoplastic stroma. And the treatment is excision. So here we see the solid papillary carcinoma, and the myoepithelial cells stain the periphery of the lesion and is absent within the lesion itself. And here's another example where you can have lack of myoepithelial cell staining, but this is still staged as PTIS, as there is no frank invasion. And here you can better appreciate the neuroendocrine quality of the cells. So here is a chart of what we went over and would like to acknowledge my staff pathologist, Dr. Michelle Josie, and the references used for this lecture. And if you like this video, please give us a like and or subscribe. Thank you.